kind of amazing that I am here on Culp's Hill, which was the major place, the most important spot in the engagement on July 1st in 1863. And here it is on the anniversary of that day. And because our country is going through what it's going through, I have that rare opportunity of actually being in this sacred place pretty much by myself, pretty, pretty quiet out here. And here we have it. Well, I, I, I hope you can kind of get the idea that this is a hill. <laughs> this is, you have to go uphill. So you can see here, here's a pathway that uh, the people were needing to go up. Now, the northerners, as I've told you, they're going to go through the town and they're going to go up and they're going to have some people up on this hill, but not a lot of people on this hill. So it just seems really obvious that what the Confederacy needs to do is capture this hill today. It's not going to get any better. And as I discuss what happens out here, I need to discuss Dick Ewell. Now, we've already talked about Robert E. Lee and Stonewall Jackson and the fact that Stonewall Jackson is no longer around. He was killed in Chancellorsville. And Robert E. Lee has to find someone to replace someone whose myth has become so large that he's basically irreplaceable. Beyond that, everyone has doubts about Dick Ewell. He doesn't seem that commanding. This would really be his first command of this level. Um, and he lost a leg earlier. And when people get that kind of an injury, they're not always the same when they return. But Robert E. Lee does not have a lot of choices. So he is going to uh, split up Stonewall's, Stonewall's division, and he's going to give part of it to Longstreet, and he's going to give part of it to Dick Ewell. Now, he's going to give an order to Dick Ewell, and one of the problems that Dick Ewell is going to have with Lee is Lee, Lee likes to give orders that are very wishy-washy. And sometimes you have to do that in this day, of course. You don't have a cell phone. You can't find out what's happening uh, over at the other end of town. So you, you have to give the people um, enough independence to try to kind of react to the situation. But Robert E. Lee seems particularly uh, deficient in just giving a direct order. He's got this kind of southern thing about him where he doesn't want to seem too bossy to people. He wants to be gentlemanly. And, and what he says to Dick Ewell is he tells him to take the hill if practicable. And so that's questionable right there because it's not going to be any more practicable tomorrow. It's not going to be any more practicable the next day. So you really just need to take the hill. This is the day to do it. They've been beaten, they meaning the north, uh, the south, Yes, they fought and they've marched, but it hasn't been a particularly onerous day. They can do this. It's not going to take a lot for them to come take this hill, whereas it is going to take a lot tomorrow. Everybody knows that. There's just going to be more problems. Uh, but anyway, he's going to tell him to uh, do it if practicable. And... Um, He's even going to say, uh, you know, what it says specifically, carry the hill occupied by the enemy if he found it practicable, but to avoid a general engagement until the arrival of other divisions of the army. So, all right, avoid engagement and do it if practicable. In other words, basically do it if, if it's, there's nobody up here. If there's any people up here, then wait around for other people. That, that's what the order sounds like to me. That's what it sounds like to Dick Ewell. Now, Dick Ewell sends uh, James Power Smith to Seminary Ridge to say he's going to uh, make an attack on Cemetery Hill if supported from Lee's side of the field. But Lee tells him that they're not going to be able to do that. Uh, they, they, there's no other people to send over to help. So, here's Ewell looking at Culp's Hill. And he sees that it's 800 yards to the east, but higher. And it appears to be empty. So he orders Jubal, he's incorrect about that, it's not empty. 
uh, the Iron Brigade is there, but it's almost empty. There's not a lot of people up there. He's going to tell Jubal Early to take Culp's Hill immediately. Jubal Early declines. Now, this is a po point where we can say, yeah, that doesn't happen with Stonewall Jackson. Stonewall would have you arrested. Possibly sh he would just shoot you if you declined that order. But Jubal Early declines. He says his men have been marching and they've been fighting all day. It shouldn't be on them to do it. Well, instead of ordering Early to do this, take this, what they think is an empty hill, he assigns the job to Johnson's division wherever, whenever that might show up. And they don't show up for a long time. Basically, it all gets forgotten. You know, he goes off to meet with Lee. I don't know what they're all talking about because it seems to me this hill would be the most important thing to be talking about. Did you get that hill? Did you get the high ground? But at the end of this meeting, it's almost like they're kind of reminded. He goes back to check to see if it's done. He's told, no, you know what? You, nobody did it. We forgot or, or the guy didn't do there or there were some people. And basically, we get to the end of the night and the North has this hill. And you can hear them sawing and doing things and building entrenchments and getting ready. And everybody knows that it's going to take so many people. So many people are going to have to die on July 2nd, on the day, on the 2nd of July, on the second day of the battle. So many people are going to die because they didn't go ahead and take the hill on the first day when they really had their best opportunity to do so.